everybody. Welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher. And we had a question or a uh, request from uh, one of our patrons, Steve. Thank you for asking about multiple drum setups or playing uh, two congas specifically and bongos together. So in this lesson, I'm going to be addressing uh, one way you can approach doing that. So that's what's going to be happening. Um, I gave you a little sample. I'll break it down talk about um, why and what and how and all that. So welcome to World Drum Club, everyone. Um, I'm playing uh, two congas here, conga quinto, and a set of bongos. I don't know if you can see the, the embra head, the large head, but it's back here. Um, about the setup, so before we get into the music stuff, uh, I am sitting on a drum throne, comfortable, Bongos in the traditional uh, seated playing position, just holding them between my legs. Congas are in front a little farther away than I would normally play them, uh, for obvious reasons. And I did want to move, you know, the, the handles of the drum, especially the, the quinto, out of my way. So it's a t tip to the side a little bit. That's basically it. The drums are resting on a wood floor. Faux wood. Not that it makes a big difference. Um, you can hear how they're tuned. So there's a couple ways I would approach playing this setup. One is what I just showed you, which is treating the drums uh, a little bit differently in terms of music, musical um, applications or rhythmic applications. What I just did was play an ostinato or a repeating pattern in the bongos, and that serves as the kind of rhythmic ground. It's a simple part, either just, you know, you can do back and forth if it's a duple meter, and two and three, or what I started in is a triple meter, which is a one, two, three, one, two, three, or whatever combination. You can do different versions of that, um, usually two out of three notes. You could even just do quarter notes to start. Let's say it's a one, two, three, one, two, three. And then in the congas, or in my other hand, I'm playing the bongos left hand with my left hand, congas with my right. In the congas, that's your more improvised area. So you're making up your, your rhythm melodies there, you're changing the rhythms. So let's hear what that would sound like in, in a very simple version. Let's call this level one, starter, beginner. Uh, we're just gonna play a quarter note on the, on the, the macho or the, the high drum. Okay, so what did I do there? I shifted the quarter note, the downbeat, actually dotted quarter note, if you're being picky, to the embra, the low drum, and then I added the second of the triplets. One t ta, two t ta, three t ta, four t ta. Dot teet, dot teet. And that gives us a kind of buoyancy and upbeatness to it, um, because we have that, the first note after the downbeat. That always kind of gives it a lift um, as opposed to the rolling feel of the da 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 a one a two that we associate with rhythms like shuffles. All right, so that's one option for you. If we want to straighten that out, practice again. You can start off really simply with, let's say, just doing quarter notes, which would be kind of like the martillo. Right, our typical bongo pattern. We're going to emulate that and then we can play whatever we want on the conga drums. One, two, three, and four, and.
so what am I doing in the congas? I'm I'm playing kind of a syncopated patterns because I don't need to play the full, you know, da, de, da, de, 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 because I've got the quarter note here in the bongos. So the bongos in this case are keeping the beat, keeping the downbeat, emulating the martillo pattern. Uh, they're alluding to it. They're not playing it exactly, of course, but I like that use of the bongos and the congas because it gives the impression um, of the two instruments working together. All right, Zen, then, Zen, I like to be in a Zen mode, now and Zen. All right, now and Zen. Uh, the other way you can think about the drums is a little more, um, well, we're moving that direction already, a little more like one instrument. So you're using them as, not as congas with bongos, but sort of like bongas. And don't say congos, never say, don't say kungas, kunga. So no offense to people in the Southern US, I love you, but um, I heard, I've heard kunga drums a little too many times. I don't know, we can do better. Congas or tumadores. All right, so the other way is kind of just treating them as one instrument. So what do I mean by that? Um, it's mix and match. You know, we're, we're not thinking them as two separate things. Uh, so everything's on the table. You can do whatever you want. So, uh, I'm just messing around here, but I hope you get the idea. Uh, you know, really, it's just playing a bunch of drums together, playing this sort of four-headed instrument, all right? Not like a four-headed snake that you would want to run away from if you saw it, but a four-headed instrument that you want to run towards and embrace with all of your musicality that you're getting from World Drum Club and other places here online. Okay, so I hope this addresses the question. I'm gonna wrap this lesson up right here because uh, we could go on and on and on, but I wanna keep uh, you know this in a package that you can digest. All right, so we covered congas and bongos together as uh, two, well, as working together as two separate instruments, playing something simple, an ostinato, a repeating pattern on the bongos. You could do the opposite too. You could play you know just simple on the congas and solo on the bongos, that's fine either way, but keeping them more in their traditional roles. And then, um, and then crossing over that line into the multi-drum instrument where you can you know, play any sound you want. And I'm also playing, like I said, in this sort of traditional holding um, and playing patterns, no stands. I do wanna continue this series though by placing the bongos on a stand, either on a sit-down stand, so that would be nice because it frees up your legs. Um, so you could place the bongos on a sit-down stand so they'd still be in, in the lower position here, but they would be supported, and I'm in favor of that. You could also place them on the other side of the drum, so over here on a stand, um, and that changes, you know, that could change the way you approach the instrument. Uh, obviously, there's the issue of reaching across the congas, so you've got, you know, it changes your accessibility, your access to the different sounds and tones. It might change the way you approach them musically, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So I would recommend um, exploring both of these ways. Um, it depends on what else you're playing as well. You know, the more instruments we put into our setup, the more we probably want to have on stands so we don't have to pick up and set down instruments when we want to switch. But that's up to you. Uh, certainly you could add a cajon instead of a throne, and I've done that. You just want to be careful when you're playing bongos on a cajon that you don't end up scratching the face or touching the face, the tapas, um, of the cajon, the, the head with the uh, hardware of the bongos. You want to be careful about that. All right, what do you think? Am I missing anything? Uh, would you like to add some advice for our global um, percussion community? 
please leave your comments below. Uh, if you have anything you want to add or you have any questions, of course, um, I'm a little more in touch with the patrons and supporters over at patreon.com slash Kalani. So go over there, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for joining me in this brief lesson. Enjoy playing your congas, bongos, and other percussion instruments. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher here at World Drum Club. Thanks for watching.